And Neil, we've got uh, a legendary return guest. It's always good to have another member of the uh, the TSB family back in the studios. You use the right term, family. You know, initially they walk in as guests. They start loving us because we show so much love. And then there is this bond that we create. And uh, it's it's just amazing to have you back, Michael. Uh, it's it's always great to see you. It's always great to see your autograph when you're not here. Yeah. And uh, welcome back to the studios. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for having me. I mean, it's like I never left. Yes, yeah, so back again. Yeah, you know, Chelsea legendary player. You know, uh, obviously, you know, winning of the African Nations Cup titles. Yeah. And uh, last time we were in here, we got we got the scoop of what it was like when you play for Chelsea and you see the helicopter come over of the uh, the former <laughs> owner. You know, the manager was on the way out. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but you look, you've come back and uh, you brought a friend. Uh, you brought. Uh, uh, David uh, Ruggiero from RIF Trust. Thank yes. you for coming in. Thank you so much for having and me. And now, uh, what are you here to talk, talk about? The citizenship, by, citizenship by investment and opportunities for many people? Exactly. Citizenship yeah. and residency by investment and, of course, football. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well um, we've got to talk about the, uh, you know, the the Premier League over the weekend. What did you yeah. make of the uh, the cup finals that were on? Well, I mean, it was amazing. Um, I think... Uh, um, I think City, obviously, they did win again. So, um, I mean, they're on a roll, aren't they? Um, it's hard to see who's going to compete with them. I think next season, I think for me, they're still the favourite really, yeah. when you look mm-hmm. at it. But um, it's been an amazing uh, end of the season. I think City deserve to finally win it. Uh, I think it's the third time in a row now they've done it. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it's special. Let's see if they can, you know, go for the treble. Uh, this is a conversation that's been happening in the studio. <laughs> Will the treble happen? How, how much of a percentage would you give City a chance uh, to get the treble? Oh, I think ninety percent. I think ninety yeah. percent, really. Yeah. I think the way they 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 they, they play now. Um, I think towards the end of the season, they kind of find they found this stride and they started playing really well. And obviously, they went on on beating and they uh, they managed to crawl up back those points that they've lost uh, with Arsenal. And they you know they've done it. And and as a City uh, fan. I I love the way they play football and I really want to see them do it. Mm-hmm. N- you mentioned something very uh, particular uh, that, you know, near the end of the season, they crawled back, yeah. they got some points. This this used to be a very common sign for the Manchester rivals, the Reds. Uh, they would do this. Come Christmas, they would get all those points in the bag. They would start churning up uh, yeah. those points. In. Yeah. Uh, is, are, are the Blues learning something from the neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you made, you made a point there. I think was, that was back in the day when Silas Ferguson used to be there. But um, I think for us, we uh, I think we just need to find a balance. Really, we need to. F- we have a lot of good players, a lot of young, talented players, but we just need to find a way to 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 get them all to click and start playing together. Because when you look at Chelsea now, it's like a whole bunch of good, talented players, but not gelling. I mm. think uh, that's the job that Pocho needs to come in and try to make sure he fix it right. Looking at some of the Premier League uh, news that's going on, uh, it seems like Harry Kane could be off Real Madrid <laughs> uh, looking for him. But what, what do you think he's going to do? Will he stay at Tottenham or do you think he'll move on? <sighs> I think that's a hard one. I think now when you look at Karim left, that's a hole there to be filled. I mean, he looks like the guy who, who you know, he needs to he needs mm. to go he needs to go away and try to he needs to win trophies. Yeah. I mean, if he stays at Spurs, is he going to win a trophy at Spurs? I doubt it. But I mean, with the likes of uh, Karim leaving now, uh, I think there's a there's a void there to be filled, and Harry Kane will be a, he he will be perfect for so that. Maybe a swap deal with someone? Do you think? Havertz. <laughs> <laughs> they they, they yeah? were talking about Havertz. Okay. Really? Yeah. From Chelsea. Yeah. Oof. Because, That's on the Spanish news, yeah. Because I, I, I've been, I mean, as an Australian, we're, we're possibility there's an Aussie coach going in, Ange Postecoglou from che- from Celtic. The Celtic manager could be uh, the the new Spurs coach. Really? Mm. But he said he wasn't going to go. Well, he didn't say he was. Uh, <laughs> he was a manager, you know. The money talks, you know. But how hard is it when you haven't coached in the Premier League? What advice would you give to to a play as a player? What advice would you have for a manager coming into one of the big clubs like that that's been underperforming? Oh, well, I think, obviously, I think when you look at Spurs, Spurs is, I think if you look at the managers they've had over the past, I say, couple of years, I think there's been, there's all, there, there is a problem there. I, I mean, uh, yeah. no managers come in and try to be able to fix it. I think Mourinho tried and Conte tried and then he became a bit more vocal because he had to say something to the public uh, and that cost him his job. But uh, there is a problem there, but I don't know how it's going to be fixed. I think the only person that knows what the problem is is Daniel Levy. So (laughs) (laughs) he needs to sort it out, but it's a big club. Um, They need to be competing once again for the trophies. Now they're out of the Champions League. They need to get back into the Champions League. No, this is challenging. You know, I mean, it's it's never too easy for a club to come back and 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 push so many right buttons at the right time. But you know, there there is no set formula. 
Yeah. Is there? Because for for a particular club, what works may not work for someone else. Yeah, true. You know, as so someone could be heavily manager dependent, and so some some clubs could be heavily player dependent. Yeah. What is the right mix? Well, you have to find the mix. I, you have to find the right balance. I think that's what when you get a good manager. I think that's something that I will give a massive uh, credit to. Uh, Eric Ten Hang at Manchester United, you know, he came in, he yeah. knew there's a massive problem, but he steadied the ship. I mean, I think getting rid of Ronaldo, everybody thought, oh, what are you doing there? But I think it kind of stabled the club, it stabled the players. The players knew they were all equal in some certain way, and then they all started performing really well. So I think it comes down to the manager coming in and straight away rectifying what the problem is and trying to fix it. I think that's what Pochettino needs to do at Chelsea. We want to get back to winning ways. We want to be competing yeah, again. Yeah, Chelsea can't finish 12th. <laughs> know. You know? No, we can't. I mean, we narrowly escaped the relegation yeah. zone. So, I mean, next season we have to we, you know, we know, have to get back to uh, at least top well, four. Yeah, well, that's the concern. Look at Everton. Just only just made it in. Yeah. You know, yeah, it can happen yeah. to any club. That's the reality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Everton, they narrowly escape. What a big club. I, I was watching the game. At the, you know, it was such a tight game. I mean, when you look back at it, like Everton going down to relegation, it would have been a massive, massive uh, news. But I mean, they they did it, and now they need to make sure next season they also have a massive problem in the club. I don't know what's happening at Everton, but uh, it seems like every manager that's coming can be able to fix the problem. I thought my friend Frank was going to do it. But he didn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, 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 what's his plan for this season? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be hard for him to get back in, isn't yeah. it? Like, I mean, with uh, with the results that he had at Everton and then at Chelsea, it's going to be tough. But I mean, I'm a huge fan of Frank. He's my friend. I hope he gets back uh, into the into the game as yeah. soon as possible. He's well loved. Always be part of the Chelsea family. <laughs> man. He's always one, yeah, of, he's, one he's, of the legends. He's part of the family. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, on, on to you, David. You're in here and you brought uh, uh, Jean Michael in here to talk about, obviously, RIF Trust. Um, you know, this is a great opportunity for a lot of people who are looking for investments in citizenship. And, 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 and how's the company looking? What, what have you got available to the public at the moment? So, um, RIF Trust is a global leader in residency and citizenship by investment. Um, we have over 10 years experience and we have 20 offices, 22 offices. The biggest one is here in Dubai, mm -hmm. in, in Business Bay. And uh, we offer citizenship and residency by investment services. So people that want to get a second passport uh, or they are looking for a plan B, a residency in Europe, in the UK, in the US, mm -hmm. in Canada. And, and when people are looking at citizenship by investments, yeah, there have been a lot of countries, uh, certainly in uh, the Caribbean, that have been very successful from the 80s and the 90s. But where are most people looking to, to invest and be citizens of the moment? Yeah, m most of the people that want a citizenship uh, directly, they look at the Caribbean. Okay. Uh, among those countries, the most popular will be uh, uh, San Lucia nowadays, yeah. Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, Granada as well. Um, and if we talk about residency and, and a plan B that can be Europe or even the UK, yeah. uh, Portugal has been extremely popular, also Spain, Greece, Malta. Those are the countries that we work with. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's a great opportunity, isn't it? It, it indeed is. But then what, what are the reasons that drive people uh, to make those decisions? So, uh, I mean, we, when, when people come to us, we try to address and reply to questions such as, uh, why why should I want a, a, a second citizenship or, or residency? Where where they want to live or travel? What kind of lifestyle they want? What are their investment preference and so, and so on? And um, people usually, they, they, they want either uh, the travel benefits that a second citizenship will offer, mm. uh, the possibility of of traveling with freedom mm. uh, without having to be attached to asking for visas and and, and that, uh, and obviously to have a plan B, to have a possibility to in the future maybe to have a, a, a second home somewhere else in the world. No, you, you're talking to the right person in that case. You know, Kitch over here travels the way he wants to with his uh, fancy Australian passport. I don't know. The, <laughs> you know, the, I, the, I, the, I, the EU are about to ask us for a visa. It's getting hard. <laughs> 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 for, for, for me you know for someone like me I, I have to apply for visas plan my holidays way in advance and, and at, at times try and rush through a holiday because my visa is about to expire yeah, you know, so so challenges definitely. And are it's unfair. It, it, yeah. It's unfair that just because you are holding a document that is different, then you have to be on these long queues and so on. And and and, and Miguel always say yeah. about about his yeah. experience yeah, when, yeah, I mean, when he was yeah. the last one jumping yeah. on the bus. Yeah. I mean, when I was, uh, you know, when I came from uh, as a you know as a young boy coming from Nigeria, when I signed for Chelsea, yeah. 2006, I remember I had my Nigerian passport, and every time we travelled like European games. Um, 
you know, we come off the plane and then we're going through this, uh, the immigration. And I just see my, my colleagues flying past me. I'm like, well, I've been standing here. Well, it's because you have your green passport. I mean, no disrespect to my country, but uh, I just couldn't. Uh, it was tough. Uh, and even before weeks before we uh, we fly, I have to go to the embassy. I have to stand on a queue. I have to try to get. But the don't visa. Chelsea have people who do that stuff? They for do. You? They do. Uh, but I have to go through the back door, which they do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I do get away with it sometimes. But it's still a hassle. You know what I mean? I you have to go in, but you have to sit. Uh, maybe I don't stand on the queue, but then I have to wait in the office mm. for maybe a couple of hours before it's been issued and things like that. Oh, and the boys are all partying. Exactly. And, you're yeah, the boys there. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then even with the. And even with the visa when i got when i get there like when we get to you when we get to the destination where we go and my teammates are flying past yeah. you know english passport uh, spanish passport whatever yeah. passport and they're like, okay you have a visa but you know you have to wait we have to verify we have to make sure it's the right visa and things like that so it was horrible but then okay. as soon as i got my passport uh i was i was flying i was like <laughs> i got my british passport i was then pretty much the first guy in the bus there we go to suddenly they can't, they can't they can't take can't the mickey me. out of they you can't. anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it's such a great thing i mean if uh i mean it's amazing uh, like i always say it's it's very good for 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 entrepreneurs uh, also individuals it's something that you can do and uh and just gives you that uh, great mobility to be able to travel wherever you want to go and then it makes your business or whatever you do very much easy uh, and you can access opportunities and uh, and then you can be where you want to be. It makes it so much easier. And, and I love how that uh, with Rift Trust, uh, you can actually legitimately speak from experience yeah, about exactly. how this has yeah, changed, yeah. Mm. You, you, you know, your life and your attitude to travel and your attitude to, you know, business and relationships. Exactly. Mm. I'm speaking from experience. That's why I am here today as a brand ambassador for Rift Trust to, you know, share my experience of, you know, to, to, to fellow individuals yeah. and entrepreneurs as well who's seeking uh, investment opportunities yeah. uh, uh, for a greater uh, travel mobility. Um, you know, there's no more better way to do it. I guess the only you know? downside is you've got a British passport instead of a house in the Cayman <laughs> Islands. <or> <laughs> you can get both. <laughs> but you need to get the passport first. Yeah, there we go. Once you get that first, it makes your life easier. And then, and then the, yeah, yeah. And yeah. everything comes. And it's, it's not just about you as an individual. It's about the f the, the future generations, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the kids to follow also will, uh, you know, will, will be getting those passports. Exactly. And, and thus life becomes so much more simpler. What is the process then in that case if one has to apply? So client comes to the office an applicant comes to the office express their interest mm. uh, we sit with them we we have we always say that we have a, a global approach but a local focus so we see exactly what they want uh, we decide more or less what is the the, the, the country that they want to go through and then there is a process where we gather all the documents that are needed to submit to the government and the government will then do a due diligence process on the applicants uh, that takes a few months and then once the application is approved is when the last payment is is done Every Everything is done obviously mm -hmm. through the governments, and uh, we work closely with them. No, the, this is a very interesting point that you made over here. That you know you work through the governments, and 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 the entire process is uh, you know p properly verified. Better, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, second citizenship is one term for uh, passport holders of countries which allow dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, I come from a country which does not allow dual citizenship, so I will have to give up my citizenship up one, yeah. to to mm -hmm. to get the other one. Yeah. It, that, doesn't emotion come in, uh, you know, to with with some of your clients from your experience, where they say, "Listen, I, I've been with this passport. Yeah, this has been my country, identity." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, but for for me, uh, and and I and I and I talk. And I say this based on the experience of the clients. Um, I think we we need to move away from the emotional attachment, right? Obviously, withdrawing your your citizenship that that's a big thing. Um, but there is many Americans that they are doing it, and, and and even more year by year. And we have a lot of U.S. citizens that are giving up their citizenship mm -hmm. to to go for something else. Um, so, at the end of the day, is. Is, is, is a game of politics, if we can say that. I mean, is, is the document that you're carrying in, you, you're, you're still who you are, you're still True. from you are, and, and, and your roots are, are, are from, from, from they are, but um, you are just enhancing your, 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 yourself, yourself, and as you will said, not only you, but also your spouse, your children, your parents, your parents-in-law, even your brothers and sisters. Uh, a lot of people can go with, with one application. And for those that they, they don't want to give up their current citizenship if their country doesn't allow dual citizenship, well, 
There is always the residency programs as well. Mm -hmm. uh, all the Portugal, Greece, Spain, Maltas that will allow you to have a residency card uh, um, and, 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 and keep your, your citizenship. And we talk about there because we live in the UAE, but we have a lot of interest through our uh, network of 22 offices to come to the UAE. Uh, the UAE is, is, I mean, is, 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 is a place that I think that we all will agree that it's an amazing <laughs> place to live. And, yeah, and, yes. and I, I always say the same when I go back to Spain in summer and they ask me okay when are you coming back I said probably never <laughs> <laughs> no. you sound like you've been on the phone to my mum <laughs> <laughs> she's always doing the same thing for more details you can check out rifttrust.com yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't tell my mum we're really happy yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, that's the best way but uh, it's Arvid Ruggiero and Mikhail John Obi. it's always great to have you guys in the studio you and so uh, you know what What was really funny was when uh, when John came in the first thing he looked was a, a wall of signatures and went yeah. where's mine <laughs> Where's Is it still here? <laughs> I made sure it was big enough so I couldn't, that, that's I couldn't look for too long to find it. You, you, you do have one of the best. Well, look, hopefully when we speak to you next time, Chelsea's in a much better position. Oh, yeah, I hope so. I you, hope so. You know, hope so. hopefully yeah, they can season, yeah, yeah, yeah. re-sign yeah. over the summer. Yes, David, you, yeah, one last point? I, I hope that Deportivo La Coruña is also in a better position. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Pochettino will do it. I think we'll, I mean, he's a great manager. Um, yeah, he's done it wherever he's been so let's hope he's going to do it at Chelsea as well wonderful great to have you guys